We are connected on this journey of self-development. We are connected in service one to another. We are connected in our search to be whole. We are all connected in the story of redemption. Yet the greatest connection is to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Brinson Connection with your host, Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III. God bless you again, again, again. This is your host and Dean, Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III. Welcome to the Brinson Connection. I'm excited today. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are you excited? This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall or should rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. You know, I was I remember singing that song. This is the day that the Lord has made. So I was at a church and, uh, you know, that's what we sing. So this person got up and said, I got some more verses to the song. So I'm like, well, what? So they said, um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Then they said, this is the minute and God is in it. I'm like, okay, okay. This is the minute and God is in it. And they said, this is the hour of God's power. I'm like, hmm, a minute and God is in it. An hour. I said, well, let's work on this. Okay, so this is a minute. God is in it. This is the hour. Minutes go to hours. And this is the hour of God's power. And then this is the day that the Lord has made. And this is the week of Satan's defeat. This is the month that truth triumphs. And this is the year that we move without fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and the sound mind. So when you start singing that song, let's count it back up. Let's go to the minute. And God is in it, and minutes goes to hours, hours of God's power, and hours goes to day, and the day God has made, and the days go to weeks, and the weeks God defeats the enemy, and the weeks go to months, and truth triumphs, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, and months go to years, and I have to live and function without fear, because God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. Well, all right, I'm excited today, I guess you can tell. Well, welcome to part two of mantles and anointings, spiritual mantles and anointings. So if you are watching me uh, and you did not uh, get a, a definition overview of mantles and spiritual mantles, oh, you need to go back and watch part one. And then this is part two. We are picking up from where we left off. Now, we all, we talked about mantles. We talked about the Hebrew concept of mantles. We talked about the biblical mantles and also the ephod, the mantles. We talked about the kings wore the mantles, prophet wore uh, the mantles, rich people wore the mantles, uh, people in high power wore the mantle, and people in the military wore the mantle. We talked about it was symbolic of power, position, authority, protection, and respect. Those are the things that comes with the mantle. We talked about the mantle being a visual mantle. The priest, the priest of the Old Testament had a mantle. It was of different colors. Guess what? The high priest wore that mantle, the ephod. When Jesus was there, he wore a mantle because for number one, it talks about it. The prophet said, and they cast locks of his mantle, his mantle, his robe, his mantle. They cast locks. Jesus, evidently, as I said earlier, was not poor. He had to be relatable. He ate with the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, the dinners and uh, the Passover he didn't pay for. You know, he paid taxes. You don't pay taxes if you don't have no money. So he sent Peter down to the water to go get the money to pay Peter's taxes and his taxes. And Peter was a businessman. Oh yeah, those of us that have been to the Holy Land, we know we went to the city of Capernaum. Peter liked to live, Peter lived on the lake. He had a yacht, 
And it was bigger than other people's boats because Jesus was down on the hinder part sleep. So we know that his boat had a lower portion. So he had a yacht. He lived on the seashore in Capernaum. You know, he was he was a business person. And he paid taxes. Jesus said, hey, oh, oh, person, don't get off on that. Let's go back to the road. So Jesus had a seamless garment, robe, mantle. And what? It says that the officers gambled over his robe, his vesture. The Bible says, and upon his vesture did they cast lots. So he had a robe. John the Baptist, you know, he wore a mantle. So the prophets wore mantles. People wore mantles back in those days. So the mantle then became also not only a visual mantle. We talked about those in today's world in the ecclesiastical community. They wear the cape or the cope, the presiding bishop the chief apostle of those over reformations and denominations when they put on all their stuff some of them they have a coat it's symbolic of covering he said as a, we said also the mantle was symbolic of covering and protection uh, as well when we talked about um those who wear the mantle clothed in the mantle uh, to envelop to wrap to conceal to surround to cover we talked about uh david talks about that uh, under the wings I shall trust. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, under the wing, under the mantle, under the cover. So those were kind of things that we talked about as related to mantle and symbols of authority and position. And uh, so therefore we talked about that the people who have mantles of authority now don't necessarily wear an actual robe, but there's a mantle. So we talked about that. We talked about the mantle. So what comes with the mantle again, we said power, position, authority, protection, and respect. So now let's talk about a spiritual mantle. So what is a spiritual mantle? In keeping with understanding what the mantle is, the mantle, the spiritual mantle is a calling. It's a gift. It's passion. It's an ability. It's an anointing. It's a skill set. It's a level of authority that God has given a specific person. God gives mantles. God gives mantles. So we tie this into the church. We talked about your pedigree. We talk about who talks to you, who mentors you, who walks in certain callings and walk with certain giftings and have certain passions and have certain abilities, gifts and graces and certain anointings and skill sets, levels of authority that God gives. God gives that. And so when we talk, talk about that, we look at that, then we must understand, we challenge you to say, what mantles do you carry? Who imparted into you? Who are you aligned with as a member of the body of Christ? What mantles do you recognize in certain individuals? And how do you seek to be a part of that? Eli just said, let a double portion of your spirit. I want the mantle. I want the spirit. He said, if you see me go up, he took the mantle, wrapped it up and said, where is the God of Elijah? People say, surely the spirit of Elijah rests upon Elijah. There was a passing of the mantle. The mantle. And so with the mantle comes the anointing. So we talked about the mantle. Now let's look at the anointing. What's, what's the anointing? What's the anointing in our lives and our ministry? Once we know our gifts, our talents and graces, and we look at mantles, what about the anointing? The anointing is one that has an authority. We talk about the anointing. God uses people that are not believers in positions of authority as well. No, he don't. Yes, he does. Cyprus, he says, Cyprus, you are my anointed one. I've used you to release the children of Israel back to their land. So there are certain people that are anointed to do certain things that God uses that may not even be believers. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, so let's look at presidents. Let's look at other people. That's why Paul says, pray for those people that are in authority. Because when it comes down to authority, nothing can go except God's allow it. So if God allows certain people to be president, 
and he allows certain people to be governor and stuff, God is yet in control. And so if you believe that God is in control and that nothing can happen unless he approve it, then when he approves it, he puts his authority on it. So when God wants to accomplish something, he will use whoever he choose. Whoever he choose. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all spiritual folk, you deep folk. God will use whatever he chooses. And God opened up the ass's mouth and he spoke when Balaam was beating it. Ba Balaam was beating it. He said, and God, God said, let me, let me use this, this ass, this donkey to talk to Balaam before he get himself killed. God will use whomever and whatever he choose, who or whatever he choose, saved or unsaved. He will anoint whomever he wants to accomplish a particular purpose. He does. He does that. He does that. Now, if he does that, what more does he want you as a member of the body of Christ, one who have accepted Jesus as Christ as Lord, one who walks in the anointing of the spirit of God? Don't you know that God wants to use you? You have been anointed. So let's look at spiritual laws for mantles and anointings. There, there's laws that comes with mantles and anointings, spiritual laws for spiritual mantles and anointings. Number one, you have anointing to do something, but someone else is wearing the mantle. Uh oh, what happens? You can be anointed to do something, but not walk in the mantle. Remember that. So, well, I don't have a mantle, but God put the anointing on you. So don't hold back because you not you don't have the mantle or the mantle wasn't given to you yet or it's not going to give you, but you have an anointing. That's the law. You can have an anointing, but not the mantle. Okay? You can actually function and operate in an anointing, but not have a mantle. You can actually function and operate in the authority of the mantle, and not the anointing. Isn't that something? You can walk in the authority of a mantle and not have an anointing. You can, the mantle comes with power, position, authority, protection, and respect, but not necessarily does it carry the anointing. So sometimes we confuse the anointing with the mantle. All right, let's look at that. When you have an anointing, it can come and go. Anointing can come and go as anointing. The spirit came upon you and anointed you for this and anointed you for that. You can know that. When the mantle is in position of authority, you can operate with no anointing. You can operate with no anointing. There are certain people that have been bequeathed a mantle. And they have a mantle. They have the power, the position, the authority, the protection, and they get the respect, but they don't have no anointing, no anointing. No anointing. It's not guaranteed that the anointing comes with the mantle. And it's not guaranteed <laughs> that that the that that you can you can walk around in an anointing and don't have the mantle. So you have to understand that. Okay. Uh, but yet we should strive to have both. We should have we should strive to have both. There are people that have an anointing on their life, but not the mantle. There are people who have the mantle that they walk in, but no anointing. But you know what? We want to have the mantle and the anointing. We want the anointing and the mantle. huh? So let's look at it. Let's look at that. So how do we go from anointing to mantle? Every one of us was born to wear some level of anointing and mantle. All of us was born to have some percentage and to wear some level of anointing and mantle. All of us. God is no respect of persons. No, he's not. So we have, we all have a purpose and a position in life. Even the unsaved, you are born into this world and purpose and destiny. That's why we have to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations. We have to go for the harvest is plentiful because God told the prophet that I, 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 before I formed you, I knew you. When you was in the belly, I sanctified you. And the prophet said, wait, woe is me. I'm undone. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And I, you come through this nasty neighborhood and this problem of unclean. And I'm, you know, and he says, no, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to touch you. He did that to both prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah. I'm going to, I'm going to, look, I'm going to, I know, I know. Look, I'm going to go. In fact, I'm going to bring the altar to you. What did he say? 
the iniquities, I'm going to touch your lips. Your lips have been unclean. Your mindset, I'm going to touch your mind. I'm going to, you, you saw me, you had an encounter with me. I'm going to let the seraphim fly more. And I, I'm, in fact, I'm not going to bring you down to the altar. I'm going to bring from the altar to you. Oh, y'all, come on, somebody. So God has a way because he know us before we were born. No matter where you are, no matter what you in, no matter what you feel like, I'm talking to somebody today. No matter what you've done, how bad you are, there is a mantle on your life for certain things. And there's an anointing that God wants to give you, and he gives it to who he wants to give it. So therefore, we must understand that every one of us has born to wear some level of God's anointing and power. The Holy Spirit comes upon us. He anoints us to be his servants. What do we do? Or so what do what 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 we do from anointing to the mantle is important because you can be anointed. And so if you have an anointing on your life, you need to be careful where you go, protect it, uh, make sure because sometimes you are in position to be to be 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 uh, uh, mentored to a what a mantle Elijah. He stayed, Elijah put his mantle over Elisha and Elisha said, I got to get up. I got to have a barbecue. I got to leave. So, you know, I, my season has changed. You know, you have to be careful how you leave. Some of us, we leave a season in a bad situation. We get mad. Now, God's been telling you it's time to leave. God's been telling you there's another mantle that he wants you to sit up under. There's another anointing he wants to give you and you have not gone. But then you get mad, you get hurt, you get upset. Then you leave and you leave wrong. No, no, see, no, you must understand seasons are transitory. So Eli, sure, this is another whole teaching, was plowing. He was in 12th place, plowing, doing what he was doing, working, being consistent when the call came to shift his, his shift to what he was doing. You're not going to be a farmer. You're not going to walk in your daddy's mantle of being a farmer and what he does in agriculture. We're going to shift you because there's a mantle that belongs to you that's not the one you're looking for. Some of you are, I prophesy, some of you all been sitting under certain people waiting for the mantle. God said that's not the, mate, the way, the mantle you waiting for the mantle you think you in line for, that's not the mantle I have for you. There's another system of authority. I'm going to shift your season, change your name and put you in another level and anoint you. And some of you, you already have an anointing. You have anointing of excellence. You have anointing of, 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 of just certain things. You have certain graces that goes with what you are in now. And people saying, you know, you just stay on in there. You're going to get it. And God said, no, no, just because you anointed don't mean you're going to get that mantle. In fact, I got another mantle for you. So you just keep on working in your anointing because the anointing that is on your life is going to be added to the mantle that I'm going to put you in and that you need to align yourself to. Oh, yeah, now, oh, I never do. That's deep, man. So what do you do from anointing to mantle? That's a very important. So let's look at the journey. Let's look at the journey. Let's look at the journey of the process. I'm on a journey, you know. So what you understand is that when you're on a journey, when we're looking at mantles and anointings, you have to understand that you're on a journey. Life is a journey, not a sprint. We want everything real fast, popping fresh, shaking bait, microwave, move, move it fast. No, you are on a journey and in a process that cannot be rushed. Some of you are rushed. You move too fast. No, stay in the process. You need to position yourself to receive that mantle. For some of you all that you know that God has already allowed you to know that that mantle is coming, then you need to position yourself to receive it. You must do all the things that's necessary so that when the mantle is brought to you or bequeathed to you, you qualify. There are certain people that have been given the mantle and other folks say, I ain't following that. I'm not being a part of that. But they got the mantle. I, don't know, I know. And with the mantle, as we said, with that mantle came power, position, authority, protection, and respect. That's true. 
But certain people decided, well, you can have your power, you can have your position, you can have your authority, your protection and the people around you respect over there. But I'm, I'm gone. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. All right. So that's just because you have the mantle don't mean you attract everybody. And that everybody have to be there, okay? You need to respect the people in authority who have the mantle. Whether you like them or not, you have to learn to respect people that carry and work in the mantle. So the governor, the mayor, elected officials, whatever, they carry a mantle, a position and authority. So you have to respect them. That's why Paul said, look, I, you, uh, well, I don't care who's in the White House or who in this, respect the office. You must respect the office and that person in the office. But I don't respect them. I respect all. But no, you got to respect the office and them in their office. Stop taking it personal. Look at what they represent. People in authority who have the mantle. You need to honor them. Because if you're going to be carrying a mantle, you know, come on. You reap what you sow. You need to serve them. Once you realize that they have the mantle that you are not destined to wear. Okay, my brothers and sisters in churches, you thought you was going to get that church. You was a deacon, you was a sister, you was the administrator, and the pastor died or the leader died or they resigned or whatever, and you was next in line. You thought that you was going to get the position and the board voted somebody else in, and so you walk around starting stuff. You don't respect. No, 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 no. That's the principle. The process is you need to serve them. If you realize that you didn't get that mantle, and 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 you are you you didn't you wasn't destined to get it, then you need to serve that person and respect the person who was bequeathed upon it. You need to learn all you can from the from them as you are serving. Learn all you can, because you know God may be moving you. Uh, to another position that carry that mantle. So, you know, we're looking at churches and ministries. I don't know why I'm on that. Somebody has been hurt and wounded because you was in line to get a church. I'm talking to somebody out there. You was in line. And when, when it came time, they looked over you. So now you got that spirit. No, no, no. You serve well. Because guess what? That means it just perhaps maybe another church may call you. So the mantle of pastoral is still on you through the training of the mentors. So you know God may just shift you. So you always have to have the right mindset and the right attitude because you never know. Even in your position on your job as supervisor, you know, wherever you go, you have to be very careful about your attitudes in the process and the journey of mantles and anointings. You have to wait. And sometimes you have to wait for your turn. Your turn may be coming. Yeah, it may not be. Well, Brinson, I've waited my turn over here. Well, maybe God is shifting you from one season from there to somewhere else. But if you if you acting all wrong, you're not acting right. When you get somewhere else, uh, your history going to follow you and then you're going to have problems. So it's always understanding mantles and anointings. Now, let me say something about mantles and anointings, because a mantles and anointings, they have a progression. There's a process of progression. You know, there are different levels of mantles and anointings, different levels, different levels, different levels. Some people's anointings are different from other people's anointings. Certain people's mantles are different from other people's mantle. Just because you have a mantle of this don't mean your, you, your mantle is equal to somebody else's level. So you have to keep that in mind. They are progressive need. They are progressive need. The ability to determine where you are in your own process. You must be able to look at yourself and your anointings and your mantles and say, where am I? Where am I in this process? If I'm destined to be the pastor, I'm destined to be the next supervisor. I'm destined to be the next governor. I'm destined to be the next president. I'm destined to be the next leader. Where am I in the process? Am I doing what I need to do to do what I have to do? Some things are earned. Some things are imparted. You know? So what's the difference of what is imparted unto me and what is earned? Some things come through struggle, through pain, through sacrifice. Some things you have to pay the price for. So where am I in the process? You know, and then as you look in your mantles, mantles have different levels. So you must always understand that you will change from mantle to mantle until you get to the final position. 
So for some of us, you must ask yourself the question, in this mantle uh, situation, am I, am I at the top level of, of my mantle? Based upon the mantle on my life, am I at the top? Can I go any higher? Or is there different levels? I have a mantle, but can I improve upon my mantleship? There's different levels. Each of these levels have an authority at that level. You well, you know, I'm the assistant. I have the mantle of the assistant and I walk in that authority, but I'm the assistant. One day I'm going to be the it man. One day I'm going to sit at the seat. So I have to wait my turn. I have to wait my process or someone may call me. So you notice even in the sports arena, you know, a person may be the coach in the football. I'm coaching uh, the, I'm, I'm coaching one group and then somebody called that coach over to be the head coach of another group. So, you know, mantles change, anointings change. Each of these levels have authority at that level. Now we have to understand that you have, to, you have a process that you have to go through. Joseph, Joseph went through a process. He had a mantle, but he went from the pit, <laughs> the mantle anointing on his life was to be a father to Pharaoh, but he had to go, he had to get first, he got to hit the Egypt, so he got to be so stripped of his daddy's stuff, his daddy said, no, you're going to get the birthright, I'm going to make you a, a coat of many colors, and then because of that, he got to, his brothers and sisters couldn't stand him, they wanted to kill him, some of y'all, you got people that can't stand you, want to kill you, and you trying to hold on to that little mantle of, you know, you the first, you got the firstborn status because your daddy, you know, your mom, I know somebody, you know, God said, no, 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 I'm going to get you all out of that. I'm going to let them strip you of your representation. They're going to take your cloak off you, your coat of many colors. They're going to put you in a, in, a, in a pit with no water. They're going to sell you as a slave. You're going to go to Potiphar's house as a slave. You're going to work there, but I'm going to move you up the ladder to be the top dog. Wherever you go, then you're going to go to prison and I'm going to get you out. I'm going to get you out to the cell and put you in the honor dorm. And then you're going to move up into the house house of the warden and then they're going to get the call and then you're going to come before Pharaoh and then you're going to become a father of the father of Pharaoh and you're going to be the prime minister of Egypt. But what did you have to do to get to be the prime minister? David, you got a mantle, you got an anointing, you can play your harp, you can play your harp, you are anointed to play your harp, but one day you're going to be playing and you're going to be the king's musician, but you're not the king's musician yet. And then he's going to try to kill you at that. You know, you have to protect your mantle. And David, you're going to be a warrior, but I got to, you got to meet the lion and the bear first. And then you got to meet Goliath. And then, you know, you're going to be, you on the way to be king, but you got to run and hide. You know, you got to protect. There are different levels of mantle, different levels of anointings. You cannot shortchange your process. Some of you all are trying to get there quick. Stop trying to shortchange your process. However, God can do anything he want to do. Now he can skip, he can make he can let you skip steps and accelerate through you through a process. But you need to start somewhere and you need to be faithful. He'll move you, just like the scripture said, I'll do a quick work and I'll cut it short and right. And some of you all, God wanna do that. So how do you know that you know you have mantles? You don't choose your mantle. God is the one who decides what mantle you receive. Ask God to reveal to you what your mantle is. You can have several anointings to support your mantle. Remember that it's best to wear the one that God assigns, anointed and appointed. So you want to begin to look at that. Let's take a look now. You want to pray and ask God, what mantles do I have? What mantle am I called for? What anointings do I have? Walk in your anointings, understand your mantle, and have a great day, and may God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.